should you be sharing your trade discounts with clients? This really depends on two things. And this is a hot topic because there, and you'll see why, um, there's a lot of people who are really adamant no, and then there's a lot of people who are adamant yes. And that's because of these two specific things that you need um, to consider when you're thinking about sharing your trade um, discounts. Firstly, it's the services you're offering. And secondly, your target market. If your target market, for example, is in the luxury market, offering a trade discount is not going to be the kind of person like they're not going to be the kind of people who want a trade discount. That's not what they're coming to you for. So I think the first thing to consider is your target market. Do they actually uh, is this something that's going to entice them to um, to uh, pay for your services? Because if you're in the luxury market, I keep coming down to like smaller projects, larger projects. If you are working on these larger projects um, and this is arguable because, um, you know, for me, when I first came to the UK, I was renting. And then I also when even once I had first bought my first um, flat, anyone who owned a house in the UK was rich to me. <laughs> so, you know, you can understand how um, you've got to understand that you know someone who owns a three hundred fifty thousand dollar or pound house is not going to be spending the kind of money on their property the same as a million or multi-million pound house or even uh like uh houses well it, it's multiple million pound houses are the ones that are starting to come in the luxury market even a million pound house isn't necessarily a luxury um market because it also depends on um, how much they're spending <clears throat> goes a little bit deeper into this because you need to understand um, a, a, a lot more about services and um, uh, the specific niches of interior design but obviously um, that's what we cover in uh, my mentorship so the first thing you need to know if you're considering sharing your trade prices is if you are already working in the luxury market which will be multiple million pound properties usually um, and these people who are spending multiple hundreds of thousands on their properties. So not just, you know, 50 K here, it's, you know, these are multiple. These are the types of people who you would never, ever even mention a trade discount to because they, that's not what they're hiring an interior designer for. So it's really important. And this is why you can see those interior designers who already are in the luxury market. They would be like, this is insane. Why would you even consider sharing your trade discounts? because they're already working with people who are, where money isn't the object, the, the discount isn't why they're hiring you. On the other hand, the vast majority of interior designers are working on properties uh, where the value of the actual project is well under 100,000. And because of this, all of a sudden, most of these clients don't even know that they can afford an interior designer. And this is where you can kind of understand if an interior designer starts to say, well, the value in having me is I can give you access to all of this, all of these trade discounts, and I can give you access to all of these things that you wouldn't normally have if you didn't hire me. So this is key because the this different market of interior design clientele who aren't the luxury market will usually consider hiring an interior designer because of these benefits. So you can see how there's this huge yes and huge no, because uh, like, well, when I started, I was giving away my trade discounts. I would always share them. That was, that was the way uh, I did it, but which also will come on to my next point about uh, the services you're providing. But it was one of the reasons that people hired me because I was um, making uh, not only my design service look really lucrative, the next phase of my design service, which was part of the install, which was really, really um, beneficial for my client. It helped them say yes to the next, to working with me because they were on a tight budget. And even if they had never considered hiring an interior designer before, all of a sudden they can start to see if they start calculating the costs. Well, if I'm going to be spending 30,000 or 40,000 on some furniture and if I can even get a 20% discount on that that's a big that that starts to make sense so even a 20% discount let's just say on 100k so that's 20k so if you're doing 80 
20k and getting a 20k discount now you can see how an interior designer that's possibly even maximum charging you at around 10k for uh, that kind of project which is 10 percent and a good fee starts to really make sense because already you're getting a designer and you're getting the discount so you can see how when we're working with the lower figures all of a sudden all of these things start to make sense whereas when you're working in the luxury market it's just completely different and obviously i've written um a blog post about niching so if you if this is all all of this terminology is new for you go have a look at our, um, how to create an interior design niche blog post that's a good one because you'll also see how i've broken down the niches in the sense that you've got luxury then you've got like the bigger luxury and then there's like a billionaire luxury so there's there's levels of luxury and then there's pretty much everyone else <laughs> and you need to know these kind of niches because obviously everyone else falls into like different types of niches so the renovators and then you've got um the new house buyers and also the downsizers so you've got all of these other kind of niches within the niche um so can you see how important it is to understand your target market whether you're um, going to um, be sharing your trade discounts. The next thing, it's not only obviously about the target market, it's also how you price your services. Because even if you're in the luxury market and the only way you're trying, you're, um, you're not, so usually this happens is when you have a shop or you're also selling products, selling your furniture. So if the only way you're selling your services or making money is on selling furniture, well, of course, then it wouldn't make any sense to share your discounts, right? But if you're getting a design fee and the bulk of your fee is a design fee and then um, you're getting a, uh, a, an additional fee to, um, to undertake procurement, then all of a sudden this starts to make sense again because you've been paid really well for your thought process and all of the things that you wanted and this is just a bonus so this next phase of the project is is an additional um fee and so if you share that fee which is what i used to do so if i made a 20 percent discount on if, or if i could source something for 20 percent discount give 10 to the client and i keep 10 and they were very happy with that so you can see how these little things make a difference so you need to know who your target market is and what services you're offering to those target market um, to know whether this makes sense. So hopefully that answers the question. Should you uh, be sharing your trade discounts? It's a hot topic and I'd love to know what you think because I know there are lots of people are very, very opinionated about this. But you can see why, because there's these two different schools and very, very different ways of working. And um, you will know which designer you are because if you've already got, you know, I wasn't that person when I didn't, when I came into uh, interiors and architecture, I was, you know, I was a student for 10 years. <laughs> so I was poor and there was, no, I didn't have friends who were, um, you know, I didn't have friends who were earning half a million pounds back then. Whereas back, like back then my, like, well, my friends were earning probably around 60 to a hundred K, which was still a lot of money for me. And I thought they were rich. So <laughs> like, and I thought that they could hire an interior designer, but their mentality, at the t like they didn't think they were rich. And they like, now I know that that isn't particularly wealthy. Like it's, you know, it, it's, it's all relative. And they think, well, no, we, we're only owning houses that are worth 300K. So even so, there's no way I could afford an interior designer they can and that's what where my niche was at the beginning i've started to create these um offerings and services for e-design to make sure that these people could be part of the interior design market and that helped me grow my business at the beginning so working on these smaller projects isn't a definite no it just means that you need to understand how to price it obviously well how to um, offer your services uh, profitably and then obviously these little things like whether you offer trade discounts or not all make sense so um yeah keep the questions coming loving the questions uh i'll come on again next week have a good one ciao